Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. Today I'm here to help you with understanding the requirements of ISO 45001. If you like this video and want to see more great content, then click the subscribe button and the bell icon. It costs nothing to subscribe and you can unsubscribe at any time. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 5.4, consultation and participation. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organization system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. So keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. Okay, let's get started. Clause 5.4, consultation and participation is unique to ISO 45001. You won't find it in any of the other big three standards like ISO 9001 quality, ISO 14001 environment. There are quite a few different elements to this clause, so I will break them down into smaller chunks and explain each part as I go. Before I do this though, I think it's important to understand the definitions of consultation and participation. ISO 45001 defines the term for each of these. Consultation is defined as seeking views before making a decision, meaning that consultation implies a two-way communication involving an exchange of information and inputs. Consultation involves providing information in a timely manner to workers and where they exist, workers' representatives or committees, so that they can provide informed feedback to be considered by the business before a decision is made. So you can see that workers are to be provided the information to review and provide feedback. It's a two-way street and engaging them in the process as soon as the information is available benefits all parties in decision making. Then participation is defined as involvement in decision making. This enables workers to actually contribute to decision making on OH&S matters, including any changes. So not only are they consulted with prior to decision making, there are certain areas that they are to be a part of the decision making. There is one more term that I think is important to understand before we move on, and that is the term worker. You will see it referenced quite a lot throughout the standard, and it has particular relevance to this clause, obviously. I say 45001 defines the term worker as a person performing work or work-related activities that are under the control of the organization. Persons performing work or work-related activities are considered those that conduct work under various arrangements, paid or unpaid, such as regularly or temporarily, intermittently or seasonally, casually or on a part-time basis. And don't forget that workers include top management, managerial and non-managerial levels. The work or work-related activities performed under the control of the organization may be performed by workers employed by the organization, workers of external providers, contractors, individuals, agency workers, and by other persons to the extent the organization shares control over their work or work-related activities, according to the context of the organization, of course. That is a very detailed definition of a worker, and I didn't make up a word of it. This is straight from ISO 45001 itself. Now, I think we're ready to work through this clause finally. I like to say that there are three separate sections to this clause. Section one are the initial requirements of the overall clause. Section two is all about what clauses in the standard require consultation of non-managerial workers. And then finally, section three is all about what clauses in the standard require participation of non-managerial workers. 
So I guess the best place to start is in the initial requirements of the overall clause, as I referred to as section one. The leading requirement of this clause states, the organization shall establish, implement, and maintain a process or processes for consultation and participation of workers at all applicable levels and functions and where they exist, workers' representatives in the development, planning, implementation, performance evaluation, and actions for improvement of the OH&S management system. This statement as a whole is basically telling us that the business that is implementing ISO 45001 is to have a process that is implemented so that it is understood how consultation and participation of workers is included as part of a very broad scope of the OH&S management system. I say a very broad scope as it specifically says that this consultation and participation is in the development, so new procedures, activities and products and even locations, planning, so what needs to be considered and planned before we commence, implementation, now we're ready to do it, so let's do it, and performance evaluation, so part of checking and reviewing whether we're on track or meeting requirements for our plan. And then finally, actions. So any actions or corrective actions as a result of changes or non-conformances or incidents even. This is made a lot clearer when we go to sections D and E of this clause where it is actually documented what particular stages or clause requirements, specific consultation or participation is required. So if this is still a bit foggy, wait up until I get to those sections of this clause. Now, there are some specific steps that this clause states that the organization shall provide, determine, or emphasize. Point A states that the organization shall provide mechanisms, time, training, and resources necessary for consultation and participation. There is also a note in this point that states that worker representation can be a mechanism for consultation and participation. So basically, the organization is to ensure that they provide the opportunity for workers to be a part of consultation and participation. If this requires that workers need to take time off work to attend training or specific time to review procedures as part of a committee, then this is what should be provided. It may also be beneficial in some instances that a worker representative is appointed to represent a particular department or group of workers in the business. Then this representative is the voice for the group. Then point B states that the organization shall provide timely access to clear, understandable and relevant information about the OH&S management system. So, of course, to enable workers to consult and participate, they need access to any relevant information regarding the OH&S system. They need access to this to allow them time to review, consider and discuss prior to any decision making. So the organization can't just surprise them at the last minute and say, hey, what do you think of this? <laughs> We're going to push this through today. That might not be sufficient time for productive and timely consultation and participation. Then point C states that the organization shall determine and remove obstacles or barriers to participation and minimize those that cannot be removed. There is also a note in this point that states that obstacles and barriers can include failure to respond to worker inputs or suggestions, language or literacy barriers, reprisals or threats of reprisals, and policies or practices that discourage or penalize worker participation. You can see that this note pretty much explains what the requirement here is. The organization cannot exclude workers from being consulted 
or participating in the OHS management system because they work the night shift only or English is their second language, that the documents are too difficult to read and understand. Okay, remember that this point is all about removing obstacles or barriers. So if there is a potential obstacle or barrier, then it shouldn't be, oh, well, that's not going to work out for you. It should be, how can we make this work for you? And of course, workers should also be comfortable to be a part of consultation and participation and voice their feedback or opinions without feeling like there may be consequences. Building and supporting an inclusive culture to accept open discussion and raising of issues or improvements is the goal here. Now, the next couple of points, D and E, use two words that I want to talk about before I move on to the actual requirements for these points. The first is the word emphasize. Now, I have looked for the definition of this word within ISO 45001 and it doesn't exist. So to help us out here, I've relied on the good old Collins Dictionary and the word emphasize is described as to emphasize something means to indicate that is particularly important or true or to draw a special attention to it. So if we translate this to how an organization is to emphasize the consultation of non-managerial workers, it could mean that the list of requirements to have workers consulted and participated in, which I'll go through shortly, is particularly important and attention needs to be drawn to them. So as an auditor, I'm going to be looking at how well an organization has drawn attention to these as part of consultation and participation. Therefore, as a consultant or someone implementing these requirements into a system, you might want to consider how you are going to be able to demonstrate evidence of how consultation and participation has been conducted. Then the second word I want to discuss is non-managerial. So both points D and E refer to non-managerial workers. Again, there is no official definition in ISO 45001. So I'll give you what I've concluded as non-managerial. Non-managerial would simply mean that workers at this level do not have anyone reporting to them. They are the gravel under boot, frontline workers, you could say. So not top management, not management or team leaders who have a team or department of workers they are responsible for. We are now talking about non-managerial workers. This is really important to understand and remember as it may be very common to see management involved in consultation and participation. However, how are non-managerial workers involved? As auditors, we need to see evidence of this at this level and function of the business. So as consultants or implementers of an OHS management system, you need to consider how you are going to ensure this is conducted and how you can demonstrate this. Right, now I think we're ready to move on to part D of this clause. This is essentially a list of the areas and related clauses that the organization has to consider the emphasis for consultation of non-managerial workers. This list simply relates to all of the other clause numbers in the standard that are relevant. I'm not going to explain every single clause number referenced. You'll have to check those out separately in Atoll TV. But to give you a summary of the clauses that do require the emphasis for consultation, they are clause 4.2, determining the needs and expectations of interested parties. Clause 5.2, establishing the OHS policy. Clause 5.3, assigning organizational roles, responsibilities, and authorities. Then there's determining how to fulfill legal requirements, which you'll find in Clause 613. Then Clause 6.2, establishing OHS objectives and planning to achieve them. And then determining applicable controls for outsourcing procurement and contractors in clause 814. Clause 9.1, determining what needs to be monitored, measured and evaluated. 
Moving on to planning, establishing, implementing, and maintaining an audit program, which you'll find in clause 922. And then finally, clause 10.3, continual improvement. What I have done in my ISO 45001 standard is go through the document and put a big C for consultation next to all of these reference clauses. This way, when I'm conducting an audit or supporting a business to build a system, it's right there in front of me in my standard. And I know that I need to ensure that non-managerial workers are or have been consulted in these areas. So now we can move on to part E, which is very similar in the construct as part D. However, this is about participation this time. So again, this is essentially a list of the areas and related clauses that the organization has to consider the emphasis for participation of non-managerial workers. This list simply relates to all of the other clause numbers in the standard that are relevant Again, I'm not going to explain every single clause number referenced. You'll have to check those out separately in Atoll TV. But to give you a summary of the clauses that do require the emphasis for participation, they are determining the mechanisms for their consultation and participation. Well, that's right back in this clause 5.4 in that introduction section that I've already been through with you. Clause 611 and Clause 612, which covers identifying hazards and assessing risks and opportunities. Then determining actions to eliminate hazards and reduce OHS risks is in Clause 614. And then you'll find in Clause 7.2 the requirements for determining competence, training needs, training and evaluation. In clause 7.4, you'll find determining what needs to be communicated and how this will be done. Then to determine the control measures and their effective implementation and use, you can refer to clauses 8.1, 8.13 and 8.2. And then finally, in clause 10.2, investigating incidents and nonconformities and determining corrective actions. Again, what I have done in my ISO 45001 standard is go through the document and put a big P for participation next to all of these reference clauses. This way, when I'm conducting an audit or supporting a business to build a system, it's right there in front of me in my standard. And I know that I need to ensure that non-managerial workers are or have been a participant in decision making. Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you would implement this into your system or understand what you're looking for as an auditor? As there are so many other clauses referenced from this clause, 18 in fact, I talk about the specific consultation or participation requirements in each of those individual clause videos. So be sure to check them all out. I know it's huge, but take on board my tip and mark C and P throughout your standards. So it's right there in front of you. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.